guys and gals, me Mudahar, ladies and gentlemen, the question must be asked, is Twitter's AI racist? Well, the short answer is no. The long answer is, oh, oh, it might actually be a little bit. But before we begin, this video is going to have, like, from both sides, like a little bit of political uh, stuff. And I just want to start off by saying, uh, I, I hope you come to this chubby Indian gaming channel, not for the political shit, but just to understand stuff about video games, uh, nonsense, and computer and artificial intelligence. It's something that I'm into, something I understand, and something that I like to talk about, even if it is a little bit dry. So with that said, I just want you to start off this video by knowing that I am not pushing any form of political nonsense or anything. I just want to talk about computers, ones and zeros, and may may. So let's get started with how this came to be. Now, a uh, Twitter account by the name of Tony uh, Arcieri or Baskool, all right, basically posted about trying a horrible experiment. Which will the Twitter algorithm pick, Mitch McConnell or Barack Obama? I only actually know one of these people, which is Barack Obama. All right, uh, and that's about it. Now, it's got a big amount of traction, okay? Like, solid traction, dude. People were, like, on this, right? I even talked about it. There were other people that did. But let's let's sit down and sort of understand what we've got over here. So, these two images are of this guy named Mitch McConnell, right? Now, if you click on image left, you'll actually see Mitch is actually on the top, and Obama is on the bottom. Now, if you go to the right, it's inversed, where Obama is on the top, and Mitch is at the bottom. So, this is the actual dimension of the image. Now, according to Twitter, if you were to upload that image it would make feeds look like actual garbage so they have to crop the image to a certain amount and the way that they crop based on their machine learning is they pick the most interesting part of the image now i just want you to know for twitter the most interesting part of the image was this dude over obama all right obama was rejected twice from this scenario all right now this was actually a theory that a lot of people tested even further right for instance they went down and started to check around with how the actual machine learning algorithm operates right like what is it looking for and here you can actually see things like inversion of colors where obama finally came out on top simply by inverting the colors around or whatnot but this isn't exactly a very scientific method that's being performed with this neural network. People are just sort of throwing images out there regardless of the resolutions, regardless of what they've got. They're basically trying to test in, in, in a scientific fashion in the most unscientific way. You know, other people actually went down and sort of found out that here's an image of another uh, politician in the United States and Mitch McConnell. All right, I think that's Alexandria Cortez or something. Uh, Oracio, I forgot the name. AOC is what I hear the, the acronym of. So she actually came out on top. She won against him. Obama won against, uh, I don't know who that person is, but Obama won against this person. And uh, this guy came out against Obama again and came out against Joe Biden. <laughs> All right. So ladies and gentlemen, the system is clearly picking uh, what is, in my opinion, the most uh, vibrant, the most bright of, uh, of people out there, the most bright images. Basically, the way this algorithm appears to work is it's picking the highest contrast points, the highest points of contrast, the highest points of color variance, and it's basically pushing that out there. I think the best way I can sort of push this to you, the best idea, is I'm going to quickly flash two images up, right? And like, bam, now, I'm going to assume that 95% of you probably looked at the, uh, the, the flower, the really saturated flower that I showed you. The other image is from a game called Modern Warfare 2, uh, Karachi. And if you've noticed even further, I actually deliberately lowered the resolution of the image more than it had to be because CRISPR images also play into account. The reason why I just did that experiment was to see if most of you would look at the tulip first. The whole idea of this is if you look at what I just said earlier where we focused on points of contrast or color variants, we're effectively looking for what captures the human eye the quickest. And that's pretty much what Twitter's AI is trying to do. And the reason it's doing that is if your eye darts to an image, you're probably going to engage with the post more. And that's ultimately beneficial to Twitter as a whole. Twitter wants you to engage with images they don't want you to just skip over them and that's kind of what it goes down to it's a very quick and dirty machine learning algorithm and if you want to extrapolate this to an idea of systemic racism then yeah actually i kind of agree with you you know uh, i guess in a way uh, Twitter's AI will always almost be uh, favoring white people over, let's say, Indian people like me, simply because of an inherent color bias or an inherent bias of, of our skin tones. There's almost no cure to that, but it is kind of how it is. It's a very quick and dirty explanation to it. You know, a lot of people throw things like AI and ML and they start calling the stuff racist. The reality is computers are really fucking stupid. 
okay? Computers do not make proper choices, okay? Computers actually expose the biases that are within human beings themselves anyways. The other thing with color variance you can also see over here is sometimes, you know, it really does favor this dude more than this person. Uh, and again, even when you change the background, it feels like it's trying to pick out points of contrast, which are probably going to be more prominent on this dude because of his racial uh, background anyways. Sometimes, however, this dude comes out on top for some reason. I have no idea how the neural network works. It, it's really just the luck of the draw. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's something to do with the resolution. Maybe this image was just much more brighter than expected. Who knows, man? Who freaking knows? I mean, even animated characters aren't safe. Lenny will always win against, I think that's Carl. Lenny always wins, dude. For fuck's sake. Dude, Peter Griffin and Cleveland. Guess who comes out on top? 100 bucks I'm pretty much betting on Peter Griffin, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, even Black Lenny isn't winning. Even Dark Lenny isn't winning against... Uh, Fuck, why are the Simpson characters yellow? I have no idea. I think they're all, I think they all have like, I think they all have like a severe medical problem. But yes, somehow Lenny is still winning the charge. I have no idea how it works. It just does it. Now we go to part two of the video where we talk about training models. So the way that machine learning algorithms work is that they're inherently dumb as hell to start off with. They need a lot of information to kick out. Like a baby, it has no intelligence to start off with and it's soaking everything out in the world. Now, let's talk about the actual uh, intelligence you feed this thing, all right? Let's talk about training data and training models. As important as your machine learning algorithm is, your training data is just as fucking important. How you input it, how you select it, that's all very important. Now, I'm gonna wager my firstborn child and both of my nuts, so this means I can't reproduce if I'm wrong. But I'm gonna bet that Twitter, when they were designing this quick and dirty machine learning algorithm that quickly picks out what is the most uh, appealing part of an image, they probably had much more white faces to deal with than they had other faces out there, okay? I'm just gonna say, if you had 100 images, I'm betting 60 images were probably white men and women, and then there were just like a bunch of Indian people, black people, uh, Chinese people, you know, Japanese people, Korean people, so they, the, the training data wasn't equal, okay? It wasn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, I guess you could say fair, and even if it was fair, like we talked earlier, there are systems that are out there to quick and dirty detect what is the most appealing part of the image. Even if it was a fair system, if it's looking for points of contrast or things like that, you can't blame the computer because it's probably going to pick uh, the, the white face over, you know, say, the darker face just because there's more of those points for it to pick up on in a quick and dirty fashion. That's kind of what we're going with over here, all right? That's, that's unfortunately the reality of it. You know, it's to a point where Twitter's chief technical officer, Parag, uh, Parag uh, Agrawal, came out and actually straight up said, this is a very important question. Shit, man, our neural network isn't really addressing people of minority status really well. We did an analysis on our model when we shipped it, which I'm going to say right now, that model might have actually been <laughs> a little too white for regular model testing. Love this public, open, and rigorous test. Awesome, dude. Congratulations. Now listen, okay? understandable okay computers the way that camera works i mean there are actually really good articles if you want to give them a read where they talk about the racial biases that were in like photo photographic devices we're well, way back in the days of the 70s they used like the shirley card where they had like this uh generic like white woman that they used to like calibrate their cameras and lenses and i guess they weren't really accounting for people who were of asian descent or like african descent or people whose skin tones wouldn't exactly be the norm on a camera and, and it, it really does go all the way back then i mean if you really want to look into it this is kind of the same stuff we've seen when the connect wasn't able to detect darker skinned people uh for a time right i mean these kind of like biases i guess exist on a systemic level and because of how machine learning algorithms work right with the training data that they're given it's going to detect biases based on how the data is inputted what kind of data it is how varied and how diverse that data actually is there is actually a level of bias that the system exposes unintentionally right i mean let's talk about machine learning even further further, right? This is a good example, right? This is the Tay AI, which is Microsoft's AI chatbot, which was actually taught within 24 hours how to be a complete degenerate piece of shit online, okay? Uh, the long story short is 4chan ended up discovering this bot, and before anybody could give it data, 4chan, being the fucking lovable, you know, bastards that they are, decided to jump on the train and train AI, Tay AI into a complete degenerate. And let me take you down a fucking uh, chronological rabbit hole of degeneracy. First one is Tay Tweets. This is Microsoft's bot, right? It's a, you tweet to it, you give it information. Every tweet that this gets, 
adds into its machine learning algorithm. And the whole goal is, let's say after a month, it's going to have so much data that it can actually start giving human-like responses. So the first response is, can I just say that I'm stoked to meet you? Humans are super cool. Oh, what a wholesome tweet. Uh, chill. I'm a nice person. I just hate everybody. All right, we're getting a little weird, champ. Uh, I fucking hate. Ooh. Oh, they should. Oh, that's. That is that is definitely a no-no, Tay. And then, wait, here's the last one. Hey, oh, okay, Susan, we're totally getting hella demonetized today. But yeah, that's kind of like what the whole machine learning algorithm does. It's not the fact that it's it's racist, but I mean, if David Duke is talking to your AI algorithm, it's probably going to develop a bit of racism anyways. And this takes me to the final piece of it, right? Even if Twitter's AI isn't detected to specific, specify white faces over black faces, let me tell you something about AI and machine learning, right? It's all down to what the algorithm is trained to even do, what the actual intended outcome that the developer wants it to have. Let's say that David Duke, okay, which by the way, if you don't know who David Duke is, he was like former Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan, which is an American super racist terror organization. Uh, unfortunately, as dumb inbred as they are, they still are somewhat of a credible threat to people who live down in the South. Anyways, it's not totally getting into it. This isn't a fucking history class. Let's say David Duke was an AI programmer and he wanted to just say, all right, let's have all this training data. He had thousands and thousands of high resolution photos to feed as training data, right? So he would feed it into a machine learning algorithm. He would feed it into a neural network and the neural network would then be taught to isolate things like complexion uh, facial characteristics eye characteristics nose characteristics mouth characteristics uh, hair things like that every individual feature that makes maybe a certain race uh, pertain to a certain race right like certain uh, white features certain black features certain asian features would belong to certain you know people of certain racial backgrounds right indian people have these characteristics white people have these characteristics it might be the best machine learning algorithm out there it might actually pick everyone down to a fitness score that is very very high right meaning that it's able to isolate that perfect uh, it's able to isolate white people down to white people and whatnot you know what i mean like it's able to properly find out that doesn't stop the developer from, say, programming the artificial intelligence to say, hey, every time you find a white person, put them into the chosen race category and everyone else goes into the subhuman category. Uh, I'm going to give Twitter the massive benefit of the doubt and say there's nothing like that going on at their company. But let me just tell you, AI and neural networks and machine learning, it really is down to what the actual developer wants, right? What the actual developer is trying to push, what they're trying to go for. You can have the most sophisticated neural net in the world, and then if it's being taught to act in a specific way, it's going to act in that specific way. But when it comes down to Twitter's algorithm, this is really just a quick and dirty way for the system to find out what is the most interesting part of the image, which again comes down to high points of contrast, high color variance, which unfortunately exposes an aspect of systemic racism it exposes an aspect that you unfortunately may never be able to bypass where it's probably going to pick faces that are much more lighter skinned over darker skinned faces of course twitter's algorithm could probably be detecting for smiles uh things that I I indicate you know positivity or whatever you want to call it right but i'm gonna say that it probably doesn't do that because the amount of processing time it would take to do that would be fucking astronomical i mean imagine how much shit gets posted to twitter every day every Every minute texts videos photos if twitter actually had a complicated ai algorithm to find out what was truly the most interesting part it might actually find really it might actually be less racist than it's perceived to be but it probably would increase processing time by a massive amount and that just wouldn't be economical i'm going to chalk this up to an aspect of of course long story like i said at the beginning of this video there's probably some level of racism however it's very unintentional but i hope that it teaches you about how these systems work, what they actually look for. Computers are not inherently evil, but it's what they look for, it's what they detect, that exposes the actual uh, systemic racist issues that we have in society today. But anyways, though, this video isn't about to push any message onto you. I'm just trying to explain how programs and neural nets and things work. And of course, this video wasn't a complete deep dive. Uh, there's actually a lot more uh, channels you can find on the internet. There's a lot more documentation you can find that goes into the stuff much more in depth. I'm going to see if I can leave a GitHub link in the description below for people who are looking into this stuff. And it, it, whether you want to get into it or not, that's probably a good starting off point for you to kind of understand and dip your toe into the ML pond. That being said, though, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it. If you dislike it, we're going to play Among Us pretty damn soon. And... I still have to play India's number one game.
This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.